How does a quartz watch work? Historically, all timepieces have always relied on something oscillating. In the case of a grandfather clock, it's a pendulum swinging to and fro. In the case of a mechanical wristwatch or a small alarm clock, it's a sprung balance wheel swinging one way and then the other. Because the time taken for one complete swing or one complete oscillation of the wheel is constant, the period as it's known to physicists, then this can obviously form the basis of a timekeeper. The same is true for a quartz watch, a tiny, tiny quartz crystal. You can think of it as an especially small piece of silicon dioxide or a grain of sand is an oscillator. It vibrates. As long as you know the rate at which it vibrates, you can use it to form the basis of a clock. Fortunately, quartz has what are known as piezoelectric properties. That is, if you squash it or bend it, it generates a small electrical current. In extreme cases, piezoelectrics are what are used to create the spark in those barbecue lighter things. As is often the case in physics, and with electrical things in particular, the piezoelectric effect also works in reverse. If you pass current through a piece of quartz, then the piece of quartz will deform. And if you pass a particular amount of current through a very carefully shaped piece of quartz, it will vibrate, it will oscillate. Bingo! You have the beginnings of a timekeeper. Look inside a quartz watch, ideally under very strong magnifying glass, and you will see a tiny little metal cylinder. This contains the quartz crystal, usually shaped a bit like a tuning fork and cut very accurately with a laser. And it's, it's minute. When the current from the watch battery is passed across this, it vibrates, it oscillates. And in most quartz watches, it's designed to oscillate at 32,768 times per second. You will notice that if you halve this number 15 times in succession, you will arrive at the number one. This is exactly what the electronics in the watch do, halving the 32,768 vibrations per second to arrive at a convenient one vibration per second, or one hertz. So the quartz crystal and its electronic minders are now delivering regular pulses separated by exactly one second. And that is why the second hand on a quartz watch moves in one second steps rather than smoothly and continuously like the second hand on a mechanical watch. It's now a simple matter to arrange gears from that second hand to drive the hour hand and the minute hand in the correct ratio. And we've known how to do that bit for centuries. The basics of quartz timekeeping have been known for over a hundred years, and by the 1930s, this method was being used to measure things like tiny variations in the rotational speed of the Earth. But these instruments were massive and very, very expensive. It was during the electronics revolution of the 1960s that quartz technology finally made its way into a wristwatch. And the very first one, the Seiko Astron of 1969, was also very expensive the equivalent in today's money of about 8,000 US dollars. But, as with everything else electronic, the price of the innards tumbled to the point of disposability. The great advantage of quartz is that it's incredibly accurate compared with old-school mechanical watch technology. Even a really cheap quartz watch can be accurate to within five seconds a month, whereas an officially certified Swiss chronometer is only guaranteed to be that accurate over a day. Time, as we know, is money. But thanks to quartz, it's a lot less money than it was. I don't, I don't know which is my favourite watch. To be honest, in some ways, it's there are two watches I had as a child. I've still got every single watch I ever owned, except my red LED one, which was stolen. But as a very small boy, I had a little wind-up Timex. It's a tiny thing. It looks ridiculous when I wear it, but I still do. <laughs> 